Hey there guys, I'm Zach and this is Zach's Editing and today I have for you guys a tutorial and I'm going to be showing you how you can make this in After Effects. So it's a pretty simple thing just using the beam effect in After Effects. Um, obviously you can use this effect for other sorts of things, however making like a shooting laser beam is the most uh, common use for it. So we're just going to import our file, if you don't know how to do that it's just file and then import import file. And then we'll just have it here in our project window. And then we're just going to drag down our file, which is right here, into the open, um, into a composition little icon down here. So now it's created a composition out of this video, and we can see that it's right here. Um, and I'm just going to scroll through to find where the start of the video is. So this is our little cursor for um, the video. So I'm just going to start it right before I run in. And then we can just grab from the left and just drag that in to that point. And then if we just bring the cursor back to the start, and then if we hit the left bracket, it'll bring where we cut it to to the very start. So if we just hit spacebar, we can watch it through, and currently it's rendering, so it will be a bit slower. We can see we've got one shot there, two shots, three shots, four shots, and then I also run a bit closer, and then do another shot. And then we'll just cut it right there. So then we're just going to um, do that and so now what we're going to be doing is going into effect and then generate and then beam so now we've um, we had this layer selected um, so now we've got this beam effect in your effect controls window so these are all of our different options that we can change for the beam right now you can see that the video has actually disappeared and it's just the beam so what we need to first of all do is just hit composite on original um, and now the beam is going to be seen on the video. So you can see right now it's just a static beam. It's not moving. It's just staying the same um, length and width and everything. So pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to put in the first gunshot. So we're going to find right where we want it to be shot. So it's going to be probably about there. And then we're going to go to this starting point. And we're going to hit this little target here. And then we're going to click about where we want it to be shot from. So I think about there is where... Um, looks good and then we're going to set the ending point again with this target and we want to make sure that it's sort of in line with where the hand is being shot or where the gun is being shot so that looks like a pretty good angle we might bring it down just a little bit more so now if we look it's not actually changing at all so what we need to do is change the time so what we can do is go into our um, time option here and what we're going to do is drag this time down to 0%. So it's pretty much going to say that at this point we want it to be 0% completed of going all the way. But first of all what we need to do to make sure that that actually changes is hit this stopwatch. So now if we go into this file down here and hit U, um, that's bringing up all of the ones that we've stopwatched. So you can see the only one that we've stopwatched is the time. So now what we can see here is a keyframe, um, and that's pretty much saying that at this point, we want it to be at 0%. And then we're just going to scroll through to where about we want it to finish, and then we're going to set the time to 100%. So now if we just play that back, you can see that it's about that. So then you might be like, yeah, it's not quite um, the angle that I want. Um, it looks like I should be um, sort of hard to tell. I think I might actually shoot it from about that point. Um, so I'll set the 0% to there um, just by dragging that keyframe and then I'm going to set the starting point um, just with that target again and I'm actually going to be shooting it down this time. So I'm just going to be going through and sort of looking at whatever point seems about right. Seems like that's probably the right about angle with like my quick like hand moving up. Um, and if we play this back, you can see that the beam's moving quite slowly. Um, so we might bring this 100% um, keyframe in a bit so that it goes to that 100% a lot quicker. So now what we can see is before the video starts is we've got this nice little red dot. It's really not nice at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this keyframe right here. And we're going to keyframe the starting thickness. So now we're going to hit U and then just click off of it and then hit you again just to bring up those keyframes and we're going to go back one frame either dragging it or hit control left key 
and then we're going to set the starting thickness to zero. So now what we can see is it's um, there's no dot there and then right as it starts it's got that correct thickness. So you can do the same thing as if your laser is finishing on screen. Um, you can do the same thing with the ending thickness if you just um, stopwatch the ending thickness here and then go forwards one frame and then set it to zero. That'll be fine. So now what we've got is a lot of different options um, to change this um, beam. So first of all what we're going to do is play with the starting thickness and ending thickness. So I think the starting thickness is about right, it looks about the same size as my finger so it would be like if that was a barrel that would be about the right size. However, when it goes like this, if we look at the perspective of this video, we can see that this um, point of the wall is much closer to the camera than over here. So what we want this beam to do is get bigger um, as it's passing so it looks like it's um, in perspective. So what we can do with that is bring up the ending thickness. Until it looks about right, um, you can sort of play it through. It might take a bit of guess and check. But if we look at that, that looks about right. We might actually bring down the ending thickness just a tad more. So now if we look at that, it looks like it's actually being shot in the right perspective. So it's not just staying the same thickness, but it's actually changing thickness. So what I might actually do right here is actually set this starting point up here. Um, just up where the finger is right now. Just because I think that that might look a bit better. I know that the dot does start right there. Um, so what we're actually going to do is if we just zoom in, we can just drag this in. Um, just something that I like to do. I don't really like having the dot starting there. So I'm just going to drag that to where it's at zero thickness at that point. And then it's going to start with that beam like that. Because I don't really like it when it has that dot because it just sort of seems unrealistic, I guess. So now if we just hit play, we can see me running in. Obviously, this is a bit slower. And then we shoot. Oop, and then we just shoot that beam right there. So then we're going to set in our second beam, which will go about there-ish. It's probably about there. Right there, where it's nice and focused. And then what we're going to do is just close this beam. And then we're going to go to Effect. Oh, firstly click on this file. Go to Effect, Generate, and then Beam again. So now we've got Beam 2. And again, we're going to play with those same options. So we'll go to Composite on Original. We'll go to the starting point. And whenever you're saying the starting point, you want to make sure that it's at that point of time where it'll shoot. So then we'll go about there, maybe a bit down more. Um, and what I like to do is sort of bring the time until it's just right out of the finger just to sort of um, line it up so it's like parallel. So now that looks pretty good. Um, and then if we just close these keyframes right here, we can just see it a bit easier. And then if we go to beam 2, and we're just going to keyframe this time, so we'll set that to 0%. And then we'll go forward. Um, firstly, we'll keyframe the starting thickness um, to 0. And then if we just hit U... We're going to go to that starting thickness, and again, I don't want that dot, so I'm just going to go forward one frame and set that starting thickness to 8, and then go forwards a bit and set the time to 100%. So again, we're going to use those same um, ending thickness that we used last time just to keep it um, together so it all looks the same. So 15.1. And now if we watch this, we can see we've got two laser beams being shot. Now a couple of other options that we can play with that I'll show you is if we look at this, um, we'll look at the first beam first. Um, so we'll close this second beam so we don't get confused. So first of all, obviously we've used the starting and ending point. We know how that works. And then we've also got the length. So whether you want the laser to be very short, you might want it to be a dot that you're shooting, or you might want it to be a super long um, laser that you're shooting. So 100% is going to go over the whole thing when it gets to 100% it'll go from here to here. So I like it at 25%. We might actually lower it just a tad more. Um, just so that looks good. And then another thing that we've got is our softness. So this is pretty um, self-explanatory. If you just zoom in, we'll hold Alt and just zoom in. Um, you can see this nice little outside color, which is also seen here, this red. We've got the softness of that outside color. So you can see if I set it to 0% it's not soft at all and if I set it to 100% then it's very soft. Um, so I like it to be nice and soft, it sort of gives off that glowing. 
Um, and then with the inside and outside color, they're pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just go through it. If you double click it, you can change it to whatever color you want. So say we want a blue sort of um, light, then we'll set the inside color to a light blue and the outside to a bit of a darker blue. So now if we just play that back, um, we can watch it go from a dark blue shot and then to a red shot. So if we go back to this blue shot, then what we've got is this 3D perspective um, check mark. So pretty much you want this checked if you're doing a normal sort of shot like this. So what it's doing is making it using what your ending thickness is um, to figure out how long it's going to be and at what point it's going to be going through. However, you've, if you uncheck it, then it's always going to be at the exact same length. It will get thicker, however, um, it'll be at the exact same length and the um, speed that it's going at won't change whatsoever. However, if it's in 3D perspective, you can see that it looks a lot smaller, as is the thickness um, compared. And it, if you look at how much it moves, it doesn't move. It moves about one there, and then it moves quite a lot more as it goes. So that's pretty much the basics of using the beam. Um, and then we'll just go through, and I'll just do the next few beams, and then explain what I did after. So now let's just watch that back just to see what it looks like now. Um, so what I'm thinking as I watch that is those two layer um, lasers look like they're shooting down a bit too low. So I think um, with that sort of thing, although my hand was pointing down, um, I think that the point of shot would have been about there. Um, it just looks like it's being shot a bit too low, just for some reason looks a bit too unrealistic, I don't know why. Um, maybe that was just my shot just when I was filming me shooting them. Um, but yeah, now we can see the rest of them look pretty good. And then this final one, um, what we can see is I bumped up the starting thickness as well because it was much closer to the camera. And then I also kept the ending thickness at the same um, as the starting thickness because it wasn't getting any closer or further to the camera. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, hope you're now able to go out and make your own sort of cool laser beam um, shooting sort of video and I'm sure yours will look a lot better than mine when you add some extra cool effect effects like some um, lens flares um, or some glows, um, especially like if you look at this, we've got obviously no shadows on the walls. Um, I don't know whether these would sort of create shadows. But just a slight sort of diffuse shadow even might um, make it look a bit more realistic. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.